<clears throat> the book of Revelation, chapter 11, verse 14. The second woe is past, and behold, the third woe cometh quickly. Um, thanks, honor, and glory go to you, Lord, Father God, in the name of your only begotten Son, who this world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, whose real name in Hebrew is Yahweh Shai. Thank you. Praise go on to you, Lord, Father God, Yahweh, who this word ignorantly calls Jehovah. You know, I want to get into this quick article along with the scripture of Revelation 11 and 14 regarding the second woe is past and behold the third woe cometh quickly because over here as far as um, New York City is concerned they got this paper called the Metro and uh, it's a free it's a free paper you know but it, it's something because for the most part the news is pretty fluffy you got to go to alternative media in order to find out what's going on and you in this country Babylon aka America and around the world but as we get closer and closer to the end that these scriptures speak of these last days before the Messiah returns who well, this word he calls Jesus Christ whose real name in Hebrew is Yahweh Shah, you know to deliver his elect chosen you know those are the lost sheep of the house of Israel okay through the spirit these signs are shown to let us know when that time is getting closer so this uh, this is from the metro in New York City and uh, on the front of this is called worried you know what I mean it says a member of physicians for social responsibility gives Metro his take on what the Donald Trump presidency means to those working to prevent nuclear war ah I mean so you got a lot of people a lot of people that's worried about the times that we're living in and what's really going on so just want to turn to uh, turn to this article and read it for you, and then bring out some scriptures on it, you know. Because a lot of people are worried on the direction that this country is going into. But hey, you know whether or not you got access to news, we going you know, Lord willing, this video will give some edification on the times that we live in. So this is the book of. Oh, pardon me. I'm in, I'm in scripture mode, you know, through the Spirit. This is on page four of um the metro it says will we move closer to nuclear war under president donald trump it says metro asked a leading opponent of nuclear weapons proliferation what the nation might expect of its new president you know in the article is by gary kane it says dr philip Letterer is a member of the Physicians for Social Responsibility, an affiliate of the International Physicians for the Prevention of Nuclear War, which was awarded the Nobel Prize for Peace in 1985. Letterer is an infectious disease diseases uh, physician in Boston, Massachusetts. Metro interviewed Dr. Letterer to get his take on how a Donald Trump presidency might impact the nuclear weapons climate. So right here, these are some questions that he asked. It says, uh, what did you make of President Donald Trump's tweet last month that the U.S. must greatly strengthen and expand its nuclear ability? The, his answer, the U.S. currently has over 5,000 nuclear warheads, over 1,000 of which are on hair trigger alert and can be launched in minutes. Just 100 of those weapons detonated over cities anywhere in the world would disrupt global climate enough to cause a worldwide famine that will put 2 billion people at risk of starvation. This is extremely concern <clears throat> concerning. You know, and it's something too because you know, for our people that fear the Lord you know those, you know, spirit bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of the Most High, the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Something that goes into people's minds is a nuclear war would be impossible because you know that it would cause too much catastrophe you know a lot of a lot of change would happen to this world and the world would be destroyed <coughs> like uh the so-called you know physicists done put out <coughs> pardon me like the so-called physicists done put out regarding you know what, what the events would take place but this is what the scriptures say you know we're gonna go into the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 1 uh, chapter 1 in the book of Ecclesiastes in the Old Testament verse 4 
It says, one generation passeth away and another generation cometh, but the earth abideth forever. You see, the earth abideth forever, regardless of who is considered as president, you know, regardless of the wars and rumors of wars seen as a sign for the Lord's second coming, the earth is going to abide forever. You know, you got a lot of people thinking about the famine, a famine that's going to come and, and the disruption it's going to cause in the land. But little do they know that as far as the famine is concerned, the main famine that should be considered is uh, this one right here in the book of Amos, you know, where it prophesies what type of famine is going to cause a lot of disruption to people. This is the book of Amos, chapter 8, verse 11. Book of Amos, chapter 8, verse 11. It says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, Yahweh. That's his real name in the Hebrew, the ancient Hebrew. That I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a, nor a thirst for water. But of hearing the words of the Lord, and they shall wander from sea to sea, and from the north even to the east, they shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord, and shall not find it. In that day shall the fair virgins and young men faint for thirst. Because what we're living in in these last days, you got a lot of brothers built up in the spirit of Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. And even people in the Christian church that are coming out of the church and hitting the streets talking about the last days and repent for the kingdom of heaven is not you see but the thing about it is in this society once things start collapsing further and further especially with the economy this racial tensions that's going on the the you know rumors of wars and pestilence coming to coming to this country and all over the world you're not going to have the benefit of being able to go to the streets and hear brothers preach you're not going to have the benefit to be able to turn on the laptop or the computer or your phone and get internet access to any of these videos. You know, we come into some real, like a brother, you know, the Spirit of Yahweh he knows who he is. Uh, I got to quote him for it. He says, yo, we coming in and we living into some real critical times, you know, to where if you're not sanctioned to be blessed with the faith, you're going to lose that there. You know, and as far as the fair virgins and the young men fighting for thirst, when um, the word of the Lord is not being spoken, this is the book of St. John, chapter 7, verse 38. It says, He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. So as far as fainting for that thirst, that water, it's talking about the words of the Lord at the end of it all. You know, those are the, that's the main thing we should be worried about. You know, those that are trying to figure out what's going on in this world, you should be trying to figure out how to receive mercy from the Lord. You know, not uh, starvation um, by cause of a nuclear war. Because deliverance, that's where deliverance takes place. But going on in this article, it says, Trump also declared during a Republican town hall in April that the proliferation of nuclear weapons is going to happen anyway. Is, prolifer is proliferation inevitable? He says, nuclear proliferation will happen if the U.S. and the other nuclear weapon states continue to insist that they need to have nuclear weapons for their security. If the U.S. and Russia need them, why don't other countries? But it is not inevitable if the nuclear weapon states meets their obligation under the non-proliferation treaty to negotiate the elimination of their, of their own arsenals and work together as they did in the case of Iran to dissuade potential proliferation. The choice is ours. We can have a world free of nuclear weapons or a world awash, a world awash in nuclear weapons to the medical community. It is clear which would be safer. And that's the thing, once, once and all going back to it, the world is not gonna be destroyed by the threat of nuclear war because all in all, as far as the nuclear war, that's referred to in the scriptures you know you got to keep in mind that the Lord is in control of all this you know the Lord is the one that has, has had this war all started up you know he's the one that well you know what I can say it one way but the scriptures can say it a whole lot better this is the book of Proverbs chapter 21 verse 1 the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord 
but as the rivers of water, he turneth it whithersoever he will. You see, the Lord is, in, is the one that's in control of how this war is going to go. Okay, he's the one that's in control of how things is going to be set up and why it's all going to happen in the first place. You know, it's, it's the will of the Lord for this nuclear war to be uh, given out. <clears throat> you see, a lot of people have it in their mind that, you know, there, there's going to be a way that we can possibly be able to stop the threat of nuclear war and stop it from even taking place. All these countries can come together and, and stop they're fighting if they decide, you know, if the U.S. decides to finally be the bigger man, so to speak, or be the bigger country. Because as you can see with this little, you know, graph right here, it says nuclear weapon states. A glance at nuclear warheads stockpiles around the world. You got America as far as 7,000 nuclear weapons. Then you got Russia, 7,300 7, nuclear weapons. I mean, you got all these different nations that got their arsenals, but as far as the big players out there, that's recorded, Babylon, America, Russia, you see? So looking at it from that standpoint, it's like, hey, if if the big dogs decide to put set aside their differences, then everything should be all right. But it's, it's not up to man. It's not up to... <clears throat> politicians whether or not this country is gonna go into nuclear war or not it's all up the lord the lord is the one that has it all set up to you know fulfill his will this is the book of isaiah chapter 54 verse 16 <clears throat> it says behold i have created the smith that blow off the coals in the fire and that bring forth an instrument for his work and I have created the waster to destroy. As far as the smith, those that was known in the ancient world, the smith that blows the coals in the fire, you had different smiths of people that work with metal or different materials to put heat to it in order to create that final that final work. You know, like a blacksmith, you know, locksmith, people that dealt with jewelry, you know. Well, the thing about these type of smiths that blow the coals in the fire is talking about the scientists that came up with the equation for this nuclear um, bomb, basically. You know, and it's known that the so-called Germans, or what the scriptures would consider as in a prophecy as the wise men of team, and they're the ones that came up with the equation to split the atom to come up with this bomb. You know, it says that in regards to bringing forth an instrument for his work, the instrument is of the Lord. These nuclear missiles is created, you know, with the Lord's purpose <coughs> for prophecy. And the prophecy that it's referring on, so like we read, the third woe, the second woe, meaning the second war, second world war cometh to pass, but the third woe cometh quickly. The third woe, world war, wars and rumors is war. Wars and rumors of wars is coming. It's coming quickly. And this is the book of Amos chapter 9, verse 8. Behold, the eyes of the Lord God, Yahweh, are upon the sinful kingdom. And I will destroy from off the face of the earth, saying that I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob, save the Lord. And the thing that you got to keep in mind as far as the sinful kingdom. Yeah, in, in the ancient world, it was referring to Israel, the Israelites being sinful and deserving of death. But that's what the Lord, you know, his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai, was, you know, put here in this flesh to be an example of how to be to turn us back to the Father, Abba Yahweh. You know, so Israel isn't going to be utterly destroyed like the scripture says, but that land that's going to be destroyed from off the face of the earth is talking about America, Babylon, the land of confusion. Also consider that spiritual Sodom and Egypt. You know, this place is going to go out by fire and it's prophesied throughout the scriptures. This is the book of Isaiah chapter 13. We're going to go to verse 19. It says in Babylon, the glory of kingdoms and the beauty of the child, these excellencies shall be as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. If you're familiar with how Sodom and Gomorrah went out and went out by fire and brimstone. But the thing about Babylon, the Babylonians didn't lose power in fire. Ultimately, they got brought down by the Medio-Persian Empire. 
if you're familiar with history. But the Babylon is referring on to is talking about America, spiritual Babylon, a.k.a. the daughter of Babylon. It says, It shall never be inhabited, neither shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation. Neither shall the Arabian pitch tent there, neither shall the shepherds make their fold there. But wild beasts of the desert shall lie there, and their houses shall be full of doleful creatures, and owls shall dwell there, and satires shall dance there, talking about desert-like creatures. And the wild beasts of the island shall cry in their desolate houses, and the dragons in their pleasant palaces. And her time is near to come, and her days shall not be prolonged. So America's days ain't going to be prolonged. This wicked society, this wicked country ain't going to be prolonged. You know, the instrument for his work, these missiles, these missiles, okay, as, as a brother I know, you know, we'll call them. You know, these things were created to waste and destroy. And that's what the Lord has intended, you know. <laughs> or if you don't know, now you know. So it reads on in this article, it says, Do you feel the unusual mutual respect between Trump and Russian President Vladimir Putin could eventually lead to a reduction in nuclear arms by both nations? I do hope that a U.S.-Russian nuclear deal might result from this relation and Trump and Putin have an amazing opportunity to finish what Reagan and Gorbachev started, you know, as far as the Cold War, where the USSR and America was going to go at it. But it is hard to imagine either the U.S. or Russia wanting to give up the weapons that make them the toughest kid on the block without a lot of pressure. Yeah, as far as the toughest kid on the block, hey man, that toughest kid on the block, that bully, that bully ain't so cool when others, you know, got a chance to bring him down. And as you can see what we read before, the Lord ain't gonna stop this war from popping off. You know, America's that big bully and America's gonna go down because they done did all this wickedness, brought forth witchcraft and, and shed the blood of the saints. You know, those of Negro, Latino, Native American descent who are known, considered that as part of the lost 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. You see, and, and those of Negro and Indian descent scattered throughout the land that also follow the curses of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, 15 verse on down, and that can vibe with this with this word, this truth, the gospel, the good news, you know, we ain't going to be suffering for much longer because the bully, you know, when you look into the scriptures, the script, the scriptures speak about Esau, the wicked ruler in the world, and Esau will be known, you know, these Rothschilds, so-called banking families, Rockefellers, they know that they're Edomites. Rothschild Red Shield. The Lord is about to bring them out of power because when the wicked bear rule, the people mourn. Right now, you know, being graced with this mercy and blessing of this truth was not just understanding. We know the wicked ain't going to be ruling for much longer. That's a blessing, man. Call Lord Yahweh Hashem Yahshua. Praise to Yahweh in the name of his son Yahweh Shah. So, reading on this article, it says, Do you think American public would support the use of tactical nuclear weapons by the Trump administration against a terrorist organization such as ISIS? I certainly hope they would not. We cross the red line banning the use of nuclear weapons at enormous peril. Even a limited use of tactical weapons would destroy the global consensus that has helped to prevent their use since Nagasaki. And as far as ISIS is concerned, America created ISIS. Do your research and you'll find out about that. They got pictures with John McCain and so-called ISIS representatives. So, you know, as the scripture says, we are not ignorant to Satan's devices and their false propaganda. What is the... 2017 agenda of international physicians for the prevention of nuclear war IPPNW will work with our national affiliates like physicians for social responsibility here in the US and with international campaign to abolish nuclear weapons to abort the negotiations at the UN for a new treaty to ban nuclear weapons these negotiations are the most hopeful step toward the prevention of nuclear war since the end of the Cold War and a rare ray of light at this dark time. Well, Yahweh Shah is that ray of light in this dark time. The nuclear war is going to come through with force. What prompted you to become involved in the International Physicians for the Prevention of Nuclear War? My two-year-old son, um, Joseph Lederer. He is the light of my life, and I want him to live in a peaceful world as a physician. I recognize that nuclear weapons are the greatest threats to human health in history. A large-scale nuclear war will mean the end of human civilization and possibly the extinction of our species it is a miracle that we have survived the last 70 years without nuclear war and we cannot expect our good luck to hold out immediately as physicians we have a duty to protect our patients and as citizens of the earth we have a duty to protect our children from this from this terrible danger hmm. 
it is. You know, it, it's funny with it all because here it is. These these representatives and and physicians and politicians, when it comes to nuclear war, they look at their families and, and their households as a reason to fight to come up with a cure. But like the scripture says, man, the Lord, He's not going to destroy the earth. It's going to abide forever. And as far as how you're going to be able to receive light and salvation in these times, well, this is the book of St. Matthew, chapter 15, verse 24. It says, But he answered and said, I am not sent but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So as far as who the Lord is going to deliver in these times, you ain't got to worry about if you got a bunker or... Uh, um, your doomsday prepper you're going to try to escape this nuclear war it's going to happen and as far as why the Lord was created it's created to be the savior okay you have a shadow of this world and he calls Jesus who's a man of dark skin complexion not that white image or Caucasian image that they have in them churches that, that man's name is Cesare Borgia the second son of Pope Alexander the sixth of Rome he's not the Messiah but this is the book of St. Matthew chapter 18 verse 11 for the son of man has come to save that which is lost as far as the loss, it's talking about the sheep. Okay, his descendants. The lost sheep of the house of Israel. You know, and those that may be hearing this word that call themselves Christians, regardless of how you look or what language you speak, <clears throat> if your spirit really robs well with this truth and you know that judgment is coming and, and you're awaiting the return of the Lord and, you know, you you really do believe in this gospel and cry unto the Lord through the grace and mercy of Yahweh and name Yahweh Shai. The scriptures speak about the strangers. It speaks about the Gentiles who are Israelite foreigners, meaning they're Israelites, but they don't know that they're Israelites because there's no such thing as a black person, no such thing as a white person, no such thing as a red person. When you go into the scriptures, all of our nationalities are within the Bible. There's 18 nations. You just got to know where you, where you fit. You know, and, and if you don't know where you fit, you gotta. that's where the power of faith comes into play. Because you're going to have people that don't look like, you know, the 12 tribes, which in biblical times, ancient world times, they were of dark skin complexion. You're going to have Israelites that look light skin. You're going to have Israelites that look like other nations. But all in all, is the spirit that bear witness in us that we are the children of the Most High, Romans 8 and 16. So to those that fear what uh, Donald Trump's presidency is going to mean to this country, meaning if you're worried about what's going to happen real soon regarding nuclear war before it all goes down this is the book of St. John chapter 14 verse 1 let not your heart be troubled ye believe in God whose real name in Hebrew is Yahweh believe also in me referring on to words written in red who this world enemy calls Jesus whose real name is Yahweh Shah. if you believe in the most high God believe in Yahweh Shah. so you know I thank you Lord Father God Yahweh in the name of your only begotten son, Yahweh Shah, for putting the spirit on me to do this quick show on this article I done read uh, this past week. And um, through the spirit, I hope that those that hear this are able to receive some edification. These are the times that we're living in, best believe. It ain't, it ain't gonna get no better for America. You know, just seek the Lord, repent, turn back sorrowful, confess your sins unto the Lord, and, you know, Lord willing, you'll receive mercy because things is gonna heat up. And if you're worried, you know, worry not, rest assured, call upon the Lord, and Lord willing, you'll be delivered if you're a part of that elect chosen. All right, so Lord willing, understanding was achieved. Lord willing, this article was able to give you some understanding of the times we're living in, and hopefully we'll be able to be delivered from this captivity, this flesh, this wicked society soon. And our Lord and Savior, the Messiah, our big brother, Yahweh Shah, will come back and deliver us. All right. To those that's in the faith, keep the faith, walk in the faith, walk in the spirit, stay strong. Shalom.